We got a deal, you fucking animal! Oh, dude, did you fuck this bread? You fuck the shit out of this bread? You don't fuck bread, God? I had me a My future has been Facebook. Sorry, I cut you off there. Because you went for the long. Yeah. The long. I was. Round. I try a lot to of emphasis it, on the. Uh, part. Yeah, I try to make it you know spicy. Keep, keep it, it in- fresh. Keep it interesting. Yeah. Sometimes we keep it international. Sometimes we keep it fresh. Like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. A little bit. Except probably, I mean, not as you know, you know what I'm saying. Not as ethnic. I'm ethnic. <laughs> <laughs> The Anti Cosby's Cosby Show. Oh, uh, yeah, that was deep. Yeah, it was pretty deep, actually. <laughs> actually, come to think of it, I know this is completely. Where this is episode ten. The ace. Just a little, little, little aside here. Did the Cosby Show? I used to watch this a lot when I was a kid. Yeah, me too. I used to watch Fresh Prince a lot when I was a kid too. Me too. I think the Cosby Show is probably the better of the two. Actually, no, I know it is. Yeah, duh. It is the better of the two. But did the Cosby Show ever really go into race? Or was it all just kind of matter of fact? I think it was all matter of fact from what I remember. You know, because like a lot of shows, and especially I think of maybe even like of the past decade, like the fact that this is like a very successful, like kind of upper middle class black family. Well, they're do- he's a doctor, she's a lawyer. Well, I know, they're very successful like people, right? Yeah. Like I think... Th- the the most interesting thing about that show and in terms of like um like creating an actual sense of like societal progression and like equality or whatever or you know like race equality whatever you want to call it is kind of i think people are, would wouldn't do it that way anymore i think people would have to beat you over the head with it mm-hmm. rather than just like no we're just people fucking normal human beings we deserve our success. Our kids we have, have a, chubby white friends, too. Yeah. We have a good family. That Cosby show is pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, I liked it. But Who like was the, your favorite kid? Oh, God. I don't even, I don't know. It was all about Bill Cosby. Because I like Theo. Theo was cool. Theo was cool. Well, because Theo, actually, like, a lot of the stories, especially the first, like, the early first, like, three years or so are very, like, identifiable, actual, like, teenage problems, actual parental reaction. Yeah. It doesn't feel, like, uh, too artificial. I mean, granted, there's usually always happy endings and stuff like that, but it usually comes from, like, uh, the revelations of it are more, like, in the nature of, like, uh, you know, a a parent just, like, getting closer to their kid or learning to like remember what it feels like to be a teenager and kind of judging things accordingly like they still even when there was like the like the come together at the end of the episodes where like everything was kind of resolved like theo would still or any of the kids would still like get grounded yeah (laughs) but it didn't mean like they didn't get like uh, a, a form of like parenting basically right which is kind of crazy. Like, when you, I think about it in, like, the, kind of, like, the more, like, modern, like, in the past, like, ten years or so, like, sitcom landscape. I don't think you'd see that. In Not fact, really. there isn't really any good, like, family sitcoms that, that are, you know, based it around the family en- unit. It all ended with Step by Step. Step by Step. The final nail in the coffin. Yeah, and they were like, no more. No more of this. Thanks, Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Summers. You bastards. Suzanne Summers is actually a distant relative of mine. I know you've told me this. My fourth cousin. <laughs> Crazy. Getting on that Thigh Master money. Yeah, I know. Where's my Thigh Master money? I'm part of this family, goddammit. Or at least your Thigh Master. Or yeah, at least send me a Thigh Master. Exactly, because everybody could use a Thigh Master. Sort of. Whether if it's I, just a, like a conversation piece, I don't know. <laughs> That's probably what it would be. Why do you have this thigh master? Well, let me tell you. Yeah. And why do you have it displayed so prominently in your house? Because I want people to ask me about it so I can tell them that Susan Summers is my fourth cousin. Why is it on the wall of the plaque? Listen, man. We take gifts from our family very, very seriously. And we like to show them off. <laughs> 
But anyways, I don't know. I mean, I well, well, the reason I brought it up was the Cosby Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I remember, you know, being like kind of surrounding also a upper crust. Well, there was African American family. He was a judge. Like, but I can't remember how it like treats race in that show. I don't remember if it was a thing or not. Not really. I don't remember it being, yeah. Not really. Every now and then there'd be a reference to like Malcolm X or Martin Luther King, like, but it was very. It was subtle. Subtle. It wasn't ever like yeah. in your face. Yeah. So it was kind of like the Cosby show, like a later Cosby show. It was the more hip happening. With a butler. It was hip happening Cosby. Jeffrey was the best part of that yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what show had a, a lot in common with The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? What? Fucking, remember the Jamie Foxx show? I remember there was a Jamie Foxx show. I never watched it, Jamie though. Foxx had his own sitcom. It was on for a couple of years. I never watched it. I never watched... I watched it later in life, because where I used to work, I used to work in a restaurant, and it's like small mom and pop place, so we could watch TV while we were, like, prepping in the morning. And uh, the guy I worked with, like, always watched it. <laughs> this is his favorite show. But we would never watch Lawrence. Like, it would, I think it was on BET. It was, like, a block of, like, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Jamie Foxx Gosh. show, and then, like, Lawrence. From, you know, um, what's his name? Martin Lawrence? Martin Lawrence. Or Martin, rather. Mar Martin! Martin's the man. I never, wa never watched that show. I don't think I've ever even seen an episode of Martin. Martin was weird. Was it weird because it was a sick, like, was just a weird sitcom? Yeah, I mean, it was good. Like, it was funny. I saw a couple episodes, but it was just, like, some of the characters and stuff Martin Lawrence would do, you'd be like, okay. It was it sketch-based? No, it wasn't sketch-based, oh, okay. but he okay. would be other characters and stuff. And Trying to fool people? Big Mama. Oh, Big Mama's house. Big Mama wasn't in it. Thank God. Well, you gotta save that, because yeah. that character demands its own movie, maybe even two, which is what or happened. three, I think, they got did, two. Oh, they did do three, didn't they? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit. Because he got shit. his son into it. I don't remember uh, if that was the second one or the third. No, that's the third, third one. That yeah, the third, the third one was one. he got his son into dressing up like a fat woman as well. I'm going to tell you this right now. Okay, I'm going to say this. I'm not thanking you for reminding me about that. That's fine. <laughs> I'll just say you're welcome. <laughs> but, like, I, yeah, I, 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 I actually, I don't even think I've ever seen any of the Big Mama house movies, which is I saw weird. saw the first one. Because I don't think. terrible. Maybe I saw the first one, yeah. I would have been right at the right age for that. Yeah. Like, not Eddie Murphy, not Nutty Professor esque meet, type movie. Meet the Clumps. I mean, because that's kind of what he was doing, kind of. Kind but of. Less impressively though, because Eddie Murphy, in a way, is like Peter Sellers. Like Peter Sellers was for a long time before, um, before the Pink Panther stuff. Those like the, that series kind yeah. of took off. He and even in the Pink Panther series, like he plays multiple roles a lot. Yeah. Like, if you, you watch uh, one of my all-time favorite movies, uh, Dr. Strangelove, he plays three characters. He was supposed to play four characters, actually, in that movie. And they are like, that's too much. Yeah, Slim Pickens, actually. He was supposed to be the character that Slim Pickens played, and if you don't know who Slim Pickens is, uh, he's the guy who rides the bomb at the end of the movie. Oh, that was supposed to be Peter Sellers? That, that character was also supposed to... He was supposed to basically have, like, a role in every sub-story. Like, every sub -plot. Oh, that was interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Anyways, little fun factoid for you there. But Martin Lawrence is not, I don't think, as, as diverse. Because Eddie Murphy, like, you know, personal feelings about, like, his ego and shit aside, is a fucking pretty phenomenal Brilliant. performer. Can we talk about Trading Places or Coming to America? Coming to America is one of my favorites. John Landis actually directed that. It's a great movie. He also directed Trading, uh, Trading Places. Did I say Spaces? No, I think you said places. Okay, good. I, I heard places. Maybe you said spaces. Okay. I don't know. I don't remember. Well, it's weird, like... Because training spaces You don't know, actually... Bad. That movie led to a huge fallout between Eddie Murphy and um, John Landis. Why? It's coming to America. Eddie Murphy's, like, ego is just out of control. Because trading places basically was one of the things that launched Eddie Murphy into superstardom. Like, yeah. Like, Trading Places and I think 48 Hours, like... Along with Saturday Night Live. And he was also on Saturday Night Live before that, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that launched his career. He was only 18 at the time, which most people don't realize. Because, like, Eddie Murphy, even at that time, even he though he... was 45. <laughs> no, he looked young. Yeah. But I don't think he looked like he was 18. No, not at all. He had kind of this weird ageless quality where he could kind of fit into any type of role. Like, yeah. Like, some people, like, you know, if you get somebody like, I don't know, like, just for example, like Zac Efron. 
Zac Efron had to grow up before people would even think about taking him seriously. And even now, I don't think he still looks like do. he was in High School Musical. Well, no, because he's got like facial hair now. Oh, not much. I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not a, a Zac Efron apologist or anything like that. But oh, I am. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm not. I don't know. I, actually, I don't think I've. I've, I've never seen High School Musical. It's terrible. When I was a teacher, I had to watch it with the kids. Oh, really? It was terrible. I told you this. I got a gift once from one of my kids. It was a poster of Zac Efron. Yeah. And she told me that if we ever had kids, they'd have great hair. Oh. So I wrote that quote on a piece of paper and I hung both of those in my refrigerator. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my story. It's my interaction with Zac Efron. No, High School Musical is terrible. It was uh, just a, I would assume it the is. The kids loved it, which it was fine. It was a good, clean movie for the kids. It was just kind of obnoxious. Is it's, it actually clean, or is it, like, weirdly, subversively, like, dirty? No, it's pretty clean. Is I mean, it? there's, yeah. there's like, romance in it, but it's, like, innocent, innocent. like... Yeah. Yeah, like, first high school crush kind of... Not, like, Los High, or whatever that... Oh, was. my God. <laughs> when we had Hulu Plus, one of the ads we saw constantly was this show called Los High, which... Or I think it's Los High, right? Yeah, it's Los High. And like, obviously a very uh, Spanish-oriented like it's high in school, like Los Angeles or something. Mean, dirty, pretty things type of or little liars club, whatever the fuck that other one's called. Dirty little... gossip girls, it's like that kind of vein, right? Yeah. At least it seemed. I have never seen any of those shows. I'm or... just going off of what like I assume they're like. Secrets of a teenage. American Teenager or whatever that show it. You yeah, know, I've, never seen I've, never, well, I've never seen it. I'm not the demographic of those shows, but... The Soup often opens my eyes yeah. to these shows because of the acting. Yeah, I used to, when I used to watch The Soup, yeah, I'd see a lot of that stuff. But, like, that show, first of all, looks like it's going to be, like, some weird, like, uh, ba- like abstinence ad. Like, the production value and the acting just looks yeah. so <laughs> terrible. It looks like an after-school special. And that show is definitely targeted. It's not targeted at adults. Like I can't, or maybe it is. I don't know. I, but I maybe can't like, imagine yeah, like I an adult. Maybe like, like late teens, late teens early twenties. Is that like a, what the hell is that show with? Because that's the kind of trash people would watch when I was in college. They would watch things like Gossip Girl and like things like that. So I think it's like college kids. What was that show that was on like when we were in high school and then like ended like uh, Which one? the one on Fox? <laughs> uh, really trashy. The OC? The OC. I remember people, like... Loving that. Loving the OC, and I was... F- not forced, but it was on in my presence, so I watched a few episodes. It was terrible. Yeah, it was fucking horrible. Like, I don't understand what the, like what people's, like, attraction to something like that is, because it's not, like... It's not well-made. The acting is mediocre. And it's not, like, dramatically interesting. Yeah. Um... I don't know. I had a friend who actually marathon all of the OC even after her, we were in high school. Mm-hmm. He like put all the DVD and made people whoever was at his house had to participate in the in the marathoning. In the marathoning, I just didn't go to his house. Yeah, I was like, well, I'm just not going to come to your house. Yeah. So Ready? Coke open. Woo! Woo! GT Cola. Get that party started. Yeah, GT Cola. Mmm, diet. Mmm. <laughs> um. Yeah, like I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get like who, what. But the East Los fu- High, tell more about it though. It's oh like, yeah, and it's just like it looks one of those shows, but it's like very exclusively about like these looks to be like sixteen year olds, like uh, well, embroiled in like and se- It's like juniors and seniors in high school from okay. what I picked up. Because right. it's like the senior girls, like you better not get with that junior girl or whatever. And she says that, so it's Does like she? older high school kids. Yeah. Okay, okay. I watched Hulu a lot more than you. Yeah. <laughs> But, like, the whole, it's just, like, it also, like, kind of reinforces, like, this this idea that it seems, like, to be out there in this kind of, like, trashy television, that relationships are based solely on, like, sex. Well, yeah, because... And, and, and they're kind of, like, reinforcing it in, like, teenagers, like, like, like casual sex and like blah, 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 like, however people feel about that, like, I don't know if I agree. If you're an adult, do whatever you want, but if you're going to, like kind of put that type of, like, moral imposition... On, like, high schoolers. On high schoolers is weird, because you're gonna... You're gonna kind of ruin their lives in a weird way. I think so. Because there's no natural progression of, like, learning and understanding that stuff. Like, dynamics of people. Yeah. If you're told when you're 13, you should just, like... Or, like, implied or whatever, because you watch these kind of shows, because that's the demographic is, like, 13, 16-year-olds. Um, like, then what do you... 
like they're not going to have that escalation of experiences that lead them to whatever conclusion they're going to come to. Come to, to about yeah. relationships and sex. And sexuality and yeah. stuff like that. No, yeah, because like the one scene is prominently like this girl is banging some dude at prom in the back of the car and it gets like videoed on a phone and then sent between the high schoolers. Yeah, which and then is her actually child pornography, it. by the way. Yeah, and then her boyfriend gets it and... He's like, you're nasty. So are you, you know? <laughs> I, I was half tempted to watch an episode just... Just to see? Just to do it, but at the same time, like, it's, it's not even worth it. It's not worth yeah, it. Yeah, no. Not when you got, we like, have more important Hell's Kitchen to watch. I, well, we finished that. We finished that. All 11 seasons. Okay, so we've, well, we've also been living about a week without the Hulu Plus. I know. How do you, is this depressing you? Does it depress you? It's not depressing, you? but, it like, you out? it doesn't bum me out. I was getting into a groove, though, where I was, like, there were shows, I was, like, when new episodes were coming up, yeah. I was excited finally again, because it gave us a break from, like, what we normally were watching yeah. in the week. So that was kind of nice, because, like, I not now we don't know if Chrissy's going to win MasterChef. Well, that's true. But we'll figure it out. I but, guess, like, with something like that, like... But also, like, Drunk History, just because we don't have cable upstairs, like, you know, in our... in our Yeah, we do not actively, like, watch television, like, yeah. as it's aired. We're not... Like, I haven't done that in years, so I don't even remember what it feels right. like. Right, so it was nice to have that option, like, if there were shows that... I mean, there weren't many shows I wanted to do that with, so that's why I'm, I don't know if I can justify paying for Hulu, but it's like... Well, I think you could justify it, because it's $8 a month. I think you could justify it if you we're watching shows week to week. Like yeah. the newer shows, like, because Comedy Central's I on mean, there, there's a lot of Comedy Central shows. Um, the network stuff, we don't really watch network television very often. Like, we're more cable. If we're going to watch anything, it's like AMC and stuff like that. Right. Like the Mad Men's and the Breaking Bad and stuff. Um, but or, I don't know. Or like, the soup. I don't... Yeah, like, I like the soup a lot. So. For me, like, I didn't miss... I don't miss it. Like, because I'm much more, like oriented to like want to just like watch movies right rather than watch like what ultimately is like appeals to like a part of myself that i don't like which is like attraction to trashy shit like we all do like because we're inundated with it constantly surf around the internet it's like trashy ads and this and that and all this other shit and it appeals to, to that part of me but it's so empty-headed like we were watching wife swap and I felt my brain melting. Like oh, I was you did just not. I seriously, like it was giving me like moral pangs because of like I felt like I was literally getting dumber with every episode we watched. <laughs> See, I'm the opposite. I like having that option because I think a lot and so I like to have that option just to be like, ugh. <laughs> well from my from my perspective, I think like Netflix at the very least forces me to watch things that are maybe a little bit more intellectually like stimulating. Okay. Because I, 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 cause even though there's a lot of trashy TV shows and stuff like that on there, um, I don't have to watch ads, which is all very fucking nice. Uh, I never got used to that with Hulu. I was terrible. Well, I think the bad part about that with Hulu also is just the same five commercials, so it'd be like obnoxious. It gets to the point of being obnoxious, yeah. Like, yeah. where you're just, like, actively, like, disgusted. I think a couple times we both were like, uh... Or One like, time we watched an episode of, I think it was Hell's Kitchen, and... There were no ads. There was, like, some glitch, and the ads, yeah, there was no ads. And we, Crazy. We noticed it, like, halfway through the episode. Like, I was where like, where are the ads? Well, when was the last time we watched a commercial? I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then we jinxed it, and it came back. And then it came back on the next episode. Um, I think you could justify Hulu Plus with, like, if you were watching things week to week. Yeah. I'm not, like... I would never get it myself. I mean, if you were to want to get it, like that's obviously fine. But like, I would never be. I would never choose to get that because even shows like the comedy, so like the drunk history and stuff like that. While I enjoy those, they're they're just so throwaway. Like, there's not anything that stays with me beyond like I watch it, I'm entertained, Dude, I walk away. The Haymarket Riot one was hilarious, though. The Chicago episode. Oh no, there's definitely some good stuff on there. There is, there is most, most, most definitely. I wouldn't take that away from it. Like, but I don't like. For me, like I'm not like bummed that I can't watch it, but I guess yeah. you are. You're a little oh, bit. A little bit. Uh, just because I oh mostly because of like the show, mostly because of like Master Chef because it was a show. We watched from the first episode, and then we got to the point where we were caught up. Yeah. And I was like, oh. And then we, like, once or twice got to watch it weeks a week, we and tweaked, that was yeah. nice. It was kind of nice, yeah. It was. So, I mean, that's why, but, I mean... 
I don't know if it's still going to justify. I can figure out a way. I'll maybe I'll have to motivate myself to go watch it on actual TV. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, there, we do have that option where we are right now, so we'll just have to, you know, go socialize or something. <laughs> it's just overrated. Yeah, I know, right? But I don't know. I don't know, but so, uh, in the interim, since we recorded last, we've actually watched a shit ton of movies. Yeah, we did. We did, actually. Because we didn't have Hulu. <laughs> yeah, actually. So we were watching, like, movies, and actually decent movies. We didn't, weren't just watching, like, crap. Because even on Netflix, sometimes we get into these ruts where we watch, like, a lot of crap. I mean, the best we watched was Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way, yes. Available now. On Netflix. <laughs> on Netflix streaming. I know, it got me in the holiday spirit, and it's not even Halloween time yet. I hadn't seen it. I saw that, like, a bunch when I was a kid, because my house was, we were a big Schwarzenegger family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We really like my dad, big action movie guy. Like so, Sylvester Stallone and like Arnold Schwarzenegger movies were like kind of staples of my childhood. Yeah. And so kindergarten or not kindergarten cop, but uh, well that as yeah, well. Yeah, that we, was we a great movie. We own that. Uh, but Jingle All the Way was like kind of like a, a thing in my house. Like I remember watching it like a lot. Yeah, I did when I, I was younger. I think I went and saw it in theaters. No, I did not do that. I think my mom took me and we went and saw it in the theater, and then I was like, yeah. This is amazing. I thought it was funny. It's okay. It's fine. I still think it holds its own. Like I watched it. La- we watched it last night, and it was like I still thought it was fine. <laughs> there are parts that are still funny, like Phil Hartman. I think is really funny in that movie. Uh, Phil Hartman's e- always funny, though. Even some of Arnold Schwarzenegger's like reaction stuff is funny. <laughs> like, because Arnold Schwarzenegger can actually be kind of funny. I think yeah. it depends on who you have like in the director's chair, probably like kind of exploiting just him like because he can play it straight and they can make it funny around him Mm -hmm. so like it it can work that way Um, because I don't think you know he would be great if like they gave him just like a series of jokes he had to tell or something it'd probably be pretty terrible but Uh, no (laughs) Arnold Schwarzenegger reacting to things and actually the impetus for that film if memory serves me correct was uh, the what do you call it Beanie Babies yeah. Because Beanie Babies, because, you know, the entire plot revolves around Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to get this toy for his son, and he forgot to get it earlier, and it's sold out, and it's Christmas Eve. And, and it's like uh, the only thing his kid wants. Cabbage Patch Kids and Beanie Babies had the same type of cultural kind of thing. And especially so around the holiday like season. So things like Tickle Me Elmo and Furby did, too. Yeah, those two, yeah. Um, so I guess there's, because I remember that shit, like, being a thing, like, where stores are sold out of, like, Tickle Me Elmo's and blah, blah, blah. Furbies. Furbies. You had to get, like, the black Furby when it first came up, so that was, like, the rarer one. I got one. It's such a weird way. Like, it's so smart. It's, like, such smart, like, a company doing that. Yeah. Because they're like, we're only going to release X amount. We're going to create insane demand. People, we will sell out. We are guaranteed to sell out on this Furby. Because had, we say there's only so many of them. I had a black and white Furby and a gray Furby and make them talk to each other. Yeah. Creepy. Beanie Babies are the same way, though, because they don't... Oh, I had Beanie Babies. They do, like, limited runs of certain things. Because these are going to be worth something someday. I was looking at Beanie Baby values <laughs> yeah. the other day. It's 99 cents. Really? Like, any of them? Some of them are, like, worth a couple... Like, I think there was one I saw was, like, $150. Yeah. But that was, like, the max. Yeah. Like, it's usually, it's usually, like, $2. Yeah. Or a dollar. Toys don't... Even, like, the really rare shit, like, like the back in the day, like, the original, like, Star Wars playsets and stuff, mm-hmm. that were incredibly, like, that was another thing that they... Yeah, like, I had the Ewok Fortress. Yeah. They couldn't... E- it was actually a sincere... They couldn't even keep up with demand, like, the the, uh, the company. Right. Like, and it was in a sincere way. Because they were selling, like, the empty boxes, mm-hmm. and you would get, like, a, a voucher, and that's what most kids got for Christmas. Was that and yeah? Like, and when it's available, you'll get the toys. Um, but yeah, we had the Ewok. It was my uncle's, and he passed it on to me. So some of my Barbies had a Ewok fortress yeah. they live near. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. But even it's those actually were the Ninja Turtles. Even live. those are not worth like retarded money. Like if you yeah. if you probably had still mint in the box ones, you'd probably maybe get like a, a grand. Yeah. But like in the in the larger context, you would kind of imagine it would be worth more. I guess. Yes, I would. I I would yeah. think that it would be. But, but it's, it's not. not. It's not. There's some Transformers that you can sell for a pretty decent amount. Especially when you get the ones that are, like, before they were banned. Because, like, Galvatron was a gun. And he, America didn't, oh, yeah. they didn't want to sell Galvatron because he was a gun. When? When? In the 80s? Yeah, yeah, in the 80s. Really? And so they changed it 
And so, if you can get an original Galvatron, woo! I think actually the guitar player in my old band, he's a he's a big Transformers fan. Um, but I don't know why. No, I mean, it's, if you can he's, see, he's, he's getting it, a death glare right it's, now. It started with like the cartoon show, but then he loves like the movies just because he gets to see. That's... Live action Transformers, like with total disregard. He's never had very good taste in movies. But besides that, uh, he actually, I believe, he had the gun Galvatron, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. well, because then they also started doing re- like the reproduction, like the re- like re rendering of it, like later. Later. But when it first came out, there was a big problem with it because it was like this. So thing if you have the original, gun... you probably get a couple hundred bones for it. A couple hundred bones. You probably get like two G. Six kajillion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I would fucking sell that shit so fast. Nope. So fast. I would oh, steal no. it from Sarah. It would be on eBay as we speak. Wish I had No, like, I don't know. Because even Transformers, when I, went to the, when I went to BotCon, like, those toys were expensive. Like, I bought a, um, I bought my uncle a Soundwave. We both love Soundwave and yeah. fun. And it was like a, a repurposing Soundwave, and it cost me like 40 bucks. Do they, do they like inflate prices at cons, do you think? Because like Mm-mm. it is exactly the niche. Because I mean, that's why these things don't usually go for insane money, because it's a niche. Like, there's only a certain amount of people in the world that are going to be willing to pay any amount of money for this stuff. So, right, like, I would imagine I don't at a think, con, there'd be like markups. I don't think, because it was like depending on what seller booth you went to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, because you obviously had the people there that were trying to sell even, like, broken ones for, like, absorbent amounts of money, and you were like, really? Yeah. But even Hasbro had a tent there because, you know, they're Hasbro toys, and they were, re- they were releasing their stuff for um, the Transformers animated series because that was debuting the year, like, the year I went to BotCon. Yeah. Because it was the year that the first movie came out. Mm-hmm. And um, even those toys were, like, Hasbro didn't mark up. And they had stuff, so, I mean, it was stuff that well, was... Hasbro didn't mark up the run, but, like, once those are sold out, right? Most of the time, the markups do not come from the actual, like, company. No, I'm just saying, but it was, like, it's pretty fairly priced all around, but it was, they're still pretty, like, Transformers, the more closer you get to the, like, the first generation and stuff, yeah. they do cost a lot. Yeah. No, I, I'm sure they do, yeah. But they don't, Hasbro doesn't sell those anymore, though, right? No. They, they'll, I mean, if they sold anything, it would be reproductions. No. They're, they were also trying to push My Little Pony there, and we were all like, what? What? Which happened. It was just a thing. It became... Well, it was a thing. I don't even know. Is that... Yeah. Um, My Little Pony Super Friends or whatever, is that still a thing? Yeah, Baltimore just had a brony con. Oh, it's so weird. That is such an odd fan base. Yeah, And but, it's mostly adult, like, men. No, I know. I had a friend who went as a joke and took pictures and documented it. It looks pretty... Actually, that'd be fantastic. I would love to do that for this, like, for, uh, for, the, for the site. Like go to a, a weird, very specific niche con, and just document it. Try to find out why, why did, what it is like. That's the appeal is like. What is like? I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of message boards and stuff, but I want to like go and like hear people just. Yeah, it's my it friend. Went. He was just like, you know, this is really weird that Baltimore's having like a brony con. Yeah. So he went with a friend, and they took pictures and stuff. It looked pretty, like, thrown together, too, but it, I think it was just a whole bunch of fans decided to, like, have rent a, a venue and yeah. have a con. That's and where all cons kind of start. It's no, like, I, I understand, but, like, that that's just a weird one. I mean, because the only, the only con experience I've been to, one con, like, one, and it's, like, a grassroots con, but it's getting really big, is MAGFest. And that's the only time I've ever had any experience with, like, the sellers area and, like, um, and it's mostly video games and yeah. anime and stuff like that. That's the only like, experience I have with any type of collecting is like vintage video games, I guess. Like, and I, ha- I have a pretty decent like Sega Genesis collection. I have some harder to find games. I don't have anything that's insanely rare or anything, but I, I got some stuff that's probably worth some money and stuff. But like, the way those things appreciate and depreciate is like, like the wind. Yeah. Like, you know, you'll have something like... Because with the internet and stuff, you'll have, like, people that make, you know, do reviews and stuff like that. Like, if somebody like the Angry Video Game Nerd does a review of an old game, a retro game that's really shitty, suddenly the fucking price for it will just skyrocket. And then a month later, it's back. Back. To nothing. Yeah, exactly. That's the way fads and things go. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's just like an interesting little thing. But I would like to do that actually. We should we should look into some, some small cons and go and bring a camera. Okay. And uh 
get some do some stuff. And I would do it in a totally sincere way, not in like a uh, antagonistic or mean spirited way either. Like general, like sincere interest. Because it's just, you know, at this point, like the way that like this stuff is evolving in culture, like as far as like nerd properties, it's becoming like they're becoming like legitimately large subcultures. They are. And I don't know if it's positive or negative. I don't know if you can really tell at this point in history. Like how I I think it does kind of keep people in a state of constant immaturity, um, because you know back in the day like well, even if you were like a hardcore like Star Trek nerd or anything like that like it was you were on the fringes and stuff you were forced to kind of keep it secret which also at the same time kind of forced you to grow up in a little bit of a way mm -hmm. a lot of those people are you know ended up being super like successful one way or the other but um, but yeah jingle all the way fantastic. <laughs> I I thought it was fun. Like I remembered, I remembered it very well. Like so, it, it almost felt like I had just watched it. Like when we were watching it. Yeah. Yeah. So like it, no, like no time had passed. It hasn't. It hasn't really. <laughs> Spooky. Yeah. I mean, I you know if if you saw it when you were a kid, I'd say revisit it. If it's, if you have Netflix, why not, right? Or if you have kids. You got eighty five minutes to kill. Or if you have kids. Let them watch it. Maybe if you have kids, maybe your kids will like it. Your kids would probably like it. I don't know. It says a lot of weird things about, like, toys and what they mean and marketing and, and, uh, actually kind of even makes a good point. Like, a uh, like, that it doesn't really matter. Like... I have the real Turbo Man at my house. Like, there's a problem with your parenting ability if your kids, uh, value what you get them over how much you love them. Like, as far as how they love you in return. So, yeah, it's got a good, good, like, little thing about about it at the end, but, yeah. Yep. It's on there. You know what's also on there? Finally. What? Which I already own it, but Dread. Uh, Dread. Dread. I was like, wait, what are we talking about? I, we actually watched it. We were playing uh, this board game, Risk, and we were like, oh, throw something on in the background. And I was like, oh, Dread's on there. Yeah, and that was bad, because I, I love that movie, and so I kept getting distracted yeah. from Risk, because I was, like, pretty. <laughs> I mean, I know, like, Dread, Dread bombed at the box office, like, did not make, like, any money. Um, I, I saw it. I, I went out and saw it. Um, but there was just zero interest for the movie, and whether or not that had to do with, like, people thinking it had something to do with the Sylvester Stallone 1995, 96 version. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't... I don't. I, it probably just wasn't marketed very well, and I don't. I think the audience for it is probably confused. Like it should have been marketing to people of, of like my age and older. Probably people that like, like grew up with like '80s and early '90s action movies and stuff like that. Because that's kind of what it feels like. Yeah. Uh, but it's a fantastic movie, and I'm happy that it's on Netflix just because more people will end up just like stumbling onto it. Because it has actually been pretty successful on home video. Like on DVD and Blu-ray and stuff, it's been pretty. It made a lot of money on that on that these like that format. Yeah. I don't know if it's good. We're gonna get a sequel because of that. Maybe you never know. But like, we should start the campaign. We should start a petition on WhiteHouse.org, or whatever. Actually, do you know there was a petition to outlaw Ben Affleck as Batman? Oh my God. On their official like White House petition site. Are you serious? Yep. Uh, they got rid of it. They were like, that's, that's ridiculous. This is an abuse of this privilege. I saw this actually funny infographic today where it was like, you know, people outraged because he was in Geely and Daredevil. But like Christian Bale, they were like, Christian Bale's never made a bad movie. And then it was a list of all these movies that like didn't do too well or weren't actually reviewed that well. Yeah. And then it was like, but Ben Affleck is a bad actor and had things like Argo and Town yeah. and like all these good movies. Yeah. And they're like, so he shouldn't be Batman. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, I think he's going to be fine. Yeah. I know you're kind of in the middle about it. I'm in the middle. I mean, I think that movie is probably not going to be that great. Yeah, in that's general. what I mean. That's, yeah. you know. But it, we might be surprised. Who knows? And that's why I'm trying to keep, like, in the middle about it right now. I'm not yeah. going to make up my mind before it happens. Like, I mean, we both like, in general, the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Yeah. I mean, we like that version of Batman, right? It's, like, kind of more realistic, okay. grounded, yeah. grittier. But I, I... Do you... Is that the only interpretation of the character, like, that you think is, like, legit? No. No. Me neither. Because I like some of the older movies, too. 
Well, I think, like, the first two Burton ones, especially the first one, like, fits very well in with the Christopher Nolan ones, almost. It's like yeah. a crime. It's a little bit more comic booky, a little more stylized. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I, I... And there are different ways to portray characters, even though I have trouble with that sometimes. Yeah. Mostly with X-Men, but... <laughs> yeah, which we'll get to later. Later. Um, but, like, I think... I'm actually kind of looking forward to, like, a different Batman... In a way, in a way, like just to because, see where they'll go with I mean, it. I mean, it was. I mean, when when did Batman Begins come out? It was like two thousand four, two thousand five. I don't remember. I think it might have been two thousand five. So it's like eight years of one interpretation of the character. About somewhere in there, well, I might be wrong on the date, but like, so we had three movies, one interpretation of the character. They were fucking great for what they were. Right. Dark Knight Rises kind of blows. Like the more I watch it, but. Um, but you keep watching it. But I do keep watching it. It's like almost like I'm hoping that I'll like it this time. Because <laughs> I never... I thought it was okay when I first time I saw it. I was like, I really liked it, but I know that it's got a lot of problems. But when I watch it more and more, like, I just focus on the problems. And, like, I'm like, ah, this is not that very good. Yeah. Um, but so I'm interested in seeing somebody else's kind of, like, take on the character. Because the character has, like, a pretty storied history of interpretations. And uh, evolution and progress, like, I, and I think there's a lot of other areas to explore as far as Batman goes. Yeah. Like even like the, like the Batman of like say like Hush. Oh. I mean, which is one of our f mutually favorite like Batman stories. Um, but like he's more he's more in tune with like James Bond, or like a like a like. Slash detective, detective, yeah. Than he is with like Christopher Nolan's Batman, but that's just as legitimate and just as good and just as entertaining. Yeah. And I, I and like it's a little bit more light. He's a little bit more lighthearted. He probably has a little bit more of a sense of humor. I think Grant Morrison, in my like the more modern Batman stuff, does a really good job of like kind of incorporating Batman's entire. He looks at every iteration of Batman as continuity. And he tries to tie it all together into a character, like why, where this character is, and blah blah blah. And it, there's a lot of fun, goofy stuff in there, and it plays. It's very like James Bondish. Yeah. He takes Batman out of Gotham all the time, like to go on globe trotting like adventures. Yeah. Which is something some people don't like at all. How dare he want to go to Asia? Yeah. How dare a comic book have fun comic booky things in it? Um, but so that's what I'm, I, I'm... It's a serious art, Sean. That's what I'm thinking that they're going to do with, like, this one. is going to be more of, like, a international type of Batman. More, like, light, lighter-toned, probably funner. I think if they allow Ben Affleck to kind of use his persona... Uh, yeah. ...as kind of, like, a wisecracking, fun, cynical kind of asshole dude... Yeah. I think it'll probably be pretty successful. If they try to make him, pigeonhole him, and be like, you have to do fucking Frank Miller's Batman... Then it's gonna be that'll be terrible. Terrible. That'll be terrible just because his personality does not match up with that. And even though I don't think he's a bad actor, like the It'll better be hard for him to... the better performances he has are more or less variations on himself. Yeah. I mean, like a lot of actors, but like you know. But I guess we'll see. Twenty fifteen, July seventeenth, twenty fifteen. It's a long time. It's less than two years, Sarah. I know. It's uh, less than two years. Start your start your doomsday clock now. I already have a doomsday clock. Can I gotta start another one? Yeah. God. I got like three of them going. <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. But anyways, yeah. So you should watch Dread on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> we are we're tangent people, man. We get off on these tangents. Uh, sometimes today especially. I, I hope though. it's interesting though. I imagine it's probably interesting. Your brother likes it. My so. brother likes it. My friend Paul likes it. Hello, Dan. Hello, Paul. <laughs> um, Hi, guys. <laughs> Paul said, he's like, you guys sound just like a morning radio show. Because I don't think Paul listens to podcasts very often. Oh. So he just doesn't, like, understand what they are, I think. I think oh. he, he only understands them in the context, like, of people being interviewed. Okay. Like, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Most podcasts are just people talking for an hour or sometimes longer. Um, and yeah, he was like, you guys, and he's like, not that's not a bad thing, but I keep thinking there's going to be a news and traffic update at some point. The weather today is sunny yeah. and slightly breezy. <laughs> it' gonna rain, <laughs> <laughs> and traffic sucks. Yeah, and no matter what context. Actually, yeah, right now it would suck. <laughs> yeah, it would, around here it would. Oh my god, 
Oh my god. Oh my god. It stresses me out just thinking about it. We live off of like the Highway 19 on Whiskey Road in South Carolina, and uh, like there's like a two mile stretch here, which is like fucking Armageddon. <laughs> if you go out during certain times of the day. Like, it's fucking just wall-to-wall traffic for, like, two and a half miles. It only, it'll take you, like, 20 minutes to go five minutes. <laughs> yeah, to go two miles. Yeah. It's, it's, it's... Aggravating. Always, always, always And people don't me. like using their blinkers. People don't like using their blinkers. That's just, people down south are not very good drivers. They're not aggressive and, uh, or defensive. They're, like, nothing. There are a lot of old people. There are a lot of retired people in the area where we live, yeah. Did you say retarded? Retired. <laughs> Probably retarded, too. I'm sure there's a pretty decent retard community out here. You oh never know. God. We're going to hell. <laughs> Maybe. In a handbasket. <laughs> well, anyways... Another tangent. Uh, so, moving on from that, uh, we did actually get to go see a theater movie. Movie in the theater. Yes, yes. Uh, and I'm really happy with our choice. We probably actually would have seen uh, The World's End if it had been playing, but... No, I would have picked this one. You still one. would have picked this one? Mm-hmm. I mean, I was really excited about this too, don't get me wrong. But I'm also very excited for that. No, I'm super excited to see the new Simon Pegg movie. Because of that's, that's like a known quantity. Like, I know The that World's be... End will be good. Right. Your next... Well, I was really excited about it. Wasn't I, sure. I, you never know. You know, because yeah. even things that like that that are like critically lauded, who knows? Because like, I don't know where... Like, sometimes I really disagree with some of that shit. Yeah. Um, but uh, this case, your next fantastic. It movie. was awesome, and we were also <clears throat> the only two in the theater. Yeah, we had a we had a private screening basically, which is good for us and bad for the movie because I hear the movie's not doing very well. It's not. No. Really, yeah. it's been getting such good reviews. It's get, been getting good reviews, and the I mean the ads for this thing are fucking everywhere. Yeah. Every movie site I go onto, all these things just like ads, pop up ads for your next for there. Maybe that's what turned people off. I don't know. Because <laughs> it was everywhere. Well, I think maybe it's also people's perception of the movie that it might be just like a, one of these, like, you know, cranked out, knockoff. Well, like my brother. Yeah. We were talking to uh, my brother Dan uh, last night. We were talking to him on Skype, and we were like, oh, we always saw you next. And he's like, oh, is that that Strangers ripoff movie? And I was like, I was like, yeah, well, it's, it's the same genre. It's the home invasion genre, uh, which is a subgenre of horror. It's a horror yeah. subgenre. And, um,. But this movie, I think, transcends it a little bit. It does some interesting things. And it was actually funny at parts, and it wasn't, like, funny because it was bad. It was actually no, intended it, to be, it's like... intentional humor. Yeah, and it was, like, good. And humor that's brought out of the actual characters. Like, right. And very realistic, though. It's things that you would imagine would actually come out of people's mouths. Yeah. Like, like the shock and everything, and like, it just and the way they react to things. It's, even it's the bro- Even, the, you were saying, the brother dynamics were really good in it, like... Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Which, there's there's some, like, you know, they, this is a family on vacation, whatever they have. It's like a kind of family reunion, and they haven't seen each other all in a while. It was their parents' anniversary. Yeah. And, um, and what happens is, like, usually people have, like, certain roles in families, like, archetypes they fulfill in a family, like, in larger families. Like, I, I'm from a family of five or six. No, five. I don't know why I don't know that. <laughs> Family of five kids. And uh, we all fill certain roles, and we all have certain, like, uh, points of view and perceptions, and sometimes they we butt heads. But we butt, don't butt heads in super violent. It's like bickering, and we argue a lot. Right. Or you poke fun at each other. You poke fun at each other, and sometimes in, like, well-meaning, lighthearted ways, and sometimes under the guise of lighthearted, me- <laughs> well-meaning ways. Yeah. Like, sometimes it is supposed to be kind of pointed and, like, being mean. an asshole and mean. Because that's just, we're just people. Yeah. And uh, I think they do a really good job with those kind of uh, family dynamics in this movie, actually. And the short time, because the movie does a really good job of, even though most of these characters are kind of asshole narcissists, like mm. the brothers and stuff, and they, they very clearly come off that way. They're all kind of very pretentious people. They're kind of all entitled. They're from a wealthy family. Um, but at the same time, you kind of like them. Yeah. And I think you like them because they're real. They feel like real people, and they're entertaining to watch. Especially one, uh, the, Drake, the brother Drake. Yeah. Drake is pretty hilarious in like a very real way. It's actually a director in his own right, uh, Joe Swanberg, who's like started the mumblecore movement. I don't know if you've ever heard of this movement. No, you told me about it after Unscripted the movie. Unscripted movies, 
they usually some people think are pointless or whatever they usually don't have very strong narratives and it's just usually just people talking and shit um but anyways yeah i really really liked it a lot yeah i really enjoyed it the whole time i even jumped a couple times cringed a couple times oh it's got some really fantastic like gory gore. mo- gory moments but doesn't overdo it though doesn't yeah i think they're spaced out like enough where like each one is effective. Each moment of, like, Viscera is effective. And it's not over the top. It's... No, it's not, actually, at all. It's pretty It's pretty straightforward. Like, even though it's, like, it, it is a home invasion movie to its core, it's not trying to make, like, some meta-commentary about these kind of movies or anything like that. The only time I felt like I had my, um, kind of preconceptions or my, like, ideas about what, uh, a movie like this should be subverted was the last act. I think they do a really good job of turning it into something else from a this like horror kind of home invasion movie where people are being picked off and shit into like a Home Alone slash Die Hard last twenty minutes. That's what it is, right? I like how you combined it with Home Alone. <laughs> well, because Home Alone, the last bit of Home Alone, what is he doing? Setting up traps and protecting himself in his house. Yeah, that's what Don't... that's what the main character does. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So from this point on, we're just this is spoiler territory from now on. Oh, okay. You've been warned. It's a good movie. I would please go see it. Help it make some money. It's it was made for under a million dollars. Like it's a really super low budget. It's actually knew, been on the shelf for like two years. And you you wouldn't be able to tell that it was like a low budget. No, because they work within their means. Like yeah. so, it never feels like they're trying to do something that they really don't have the money to do. Um. But anyways, moving on. Uh, yeah, so the last third of the movie turns into a kind of different movie. Like a different dynamic, pacing and tone-wise. Yeah. Right? Uh, and it's still super exciting and interesting. I agree. And I love the main, uh, the that actress, Sharni Vinson, I believe her name is. She's I don't an Australian know actress. Yeah. Uh, this is the first thing I've ever seen her in. I thought she was awesome. But not only is she awesome, because... A lot of times in these movies, like, there is, like, uh, the female character will be the one that's standing at the end, right? Yes. But a lot of times, it's not because of her capability. It's stumbling. She stumbles, stumbles her, way, through, her yeah. way through it. Or hides. Or hides, or or just happens to some way get the upper hand. This girl is, like, very calm and collected and capable. She's and super capable. She's badass. And she's a badass. Like, a real badass. In the true sense of that term. Um... And she's, like, while it's, she's terrified and she's overwhelmed and it's shocking what's happening and you have to kind of process all that shit, she, uh, she does it without ever coming off as weak, ever. Yeah. She fucking gets, like, stabbed in the leg and she's just, like, running around still doing her thing. Yeah, because <laughs> she has no... short of glass. She, she has no choice. Like, yeah. She, which was something that's... I like that they put that to her characters. She grew up in a survivalist camp. Yeah, exactly. And they justify it. Yeah. Yeah, they justified it. Like, it was because, you know, she's dating this guy, and they don't really know each other all super well. They're just kind of starting out. They've only dated for so long. It's kind of like her dark secret. Yeah, she hasn't told him yet. Si- she was raised in a survivalist commune up until she was, like, 15 or something. Yeah. Um, In the outback of Australia. That's intense. That sounds like Mad Max. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it was nice, because to, to have a movie like this that had, like, such a positive like female role model in a weird way yeah and usually like this I'm not one to harp on that kind of stuff honestly but just in the in the nature of like how horror movies usually are that was like the most surprising thing to me actually was that they made her stand on her own two feet that's how capable she was yeah and in a believable way I never was thought it was ridiculous no yeah. I, you know, I was, uh, yeah, that was the last word that came to my mind when thinking of that movie or yeah. anything in it. No, yeah. Nothing was, like, too absurd, ridiculous, or, like I said, over the top. Like, it was very well executed and thought out, and it's paced awesomely. Very, paced very, very well. It's, like, 90 minutes. Like, a solid, like, 90 minute, like, And doesn't feel like anything's missing. No, no, it feels very well rounded, cohesive. Yep. Um, even, like, those, like, the, like the twist, the reveal of what's actually going on is probably the most obvious thing. 
It was. It and was. It, it wasn't. Because it, it. Well, I guess that's easy to say in hindsight, right? Yeah. It sets up characters that would be this way. Yeah. Uh, we find out that the one of the little, the youngest brother is trying to kill his whole family and basically get inheritance. Yeah. I'm. That's what I'm assuming is. Like fifty million dollars um, or something. Yeah, and they like they set up kind of. I thought this movie was gonna have, like have some sort of political commentary. Because, like, the father was worked for, in marketing for, like, a weapons manufacturer or whatever. Yeah. Uh, for the military, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then the intruders, you find out, are ex-military. So I thought they were going to make some sort of commentary about, like, this is, like, the wep- like the things you promoted being brought back on you. And I guess it's probably there subtly. Like, in a, in a very subtle way. Not in a way that they actually, like, kind of... Like, they don't ever acknowledge it outright. Or say anything. No, they don't say... No, the characters don't, like, yeah. acknowledge it, which is what I thought was going to happen. No, I know. I was saying, but they don't... I mean, we can acknowledge it as the audience, but it's not something they don't... They just kind of bring it up, and then it's gone, and then it just exists. Like, and I like that. Yeah. That it's not, like, pretentious and clumsy. I kind of like that it was so simple, like, about just a fucking... Because it makes sense in hindsight, because the family is such a narcissist. Yeah, that mom... <laughs> Oh, I don't even think the mom. I thought more just like the kids. They're fucking entitled and spoiled and like yeah, you have the daughter. assholes. They're That's assholes. my little princess. Yeah. <laughs> They're complete assholes. And like and it makes sense that like, oh yeah, I bet one of them would try to fucking kill everybody to get the And narrative. it was kind of obvious when you found out because like the way his girlfriend acts and stuff too. His girlfriend was always distant and weird. And yeah. puts her legs up at the dinner table. Yeah. Like on the chair and stuff. Like, Which you it. don't know because of the other like family like because, like, all, like, the, the siblings, like, girlfriends and boyfriends are all kind of varied, I guess. Because one of them's, like, a pretentious filmmaker who's only... Who's, like, ma- foreign. Who's made one underground documentary, like, five years ago. So they shot, like, under the ground? Which is actually played by, uh, yeah, Ty West, who's director, a horror director. Uh, the movie's actually really like The Innkeeper in the uh, House of the Devil. They're really good, like, kind of oh, throwback, slow burn horror movies. Um, and, and then you have, like, the Crispin, the professor who's dating his ex-student. Yeah. And, uh... And then... And she's, and she's kind of the nice one. Kind of, like, bubbly, friendly. Like, wants Australian. everybody to like her. It's Australian. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, and then Drake and his stuffy wife. And his stuffy wife. So, like, the fact that they, sh- like, it made sense to me that, like, one of them would just be a bitch. Like, just, like, a gothic like hipster bitch yeah that's kind of what she comes off as at first like I said but like but yeah you do get the sense that like she's a little too calm about it or something yeah and like yeah. Meh. yeah yeah it's nice it's it's not totally obvious but like you just get the sense something's there so but actually but leading up to the reveal of the actual what was going on like re- do you think it was gonna go into like deeper crazier territory like they were gonna throw something really weird at you I thought something, because I kept asking about Crispin. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you thought... Yeah, because uh, you find out that the other brother, Crispin, is also involved. He comes back at the very end of the movie to give a little spiel, which is actually really awesome. Yeah. And uh, and then then his girlfriend fucking just stabs him, because why not? That's, that's what she says. That's what she says. Um, yeah, he gives, like, this really great, smarmy little speech. But do you think... It, did you think it was ever going to get, like... Because it's simple. Like, and that's kind of the beauty of it. Like, how simple that, like, the actual, like, event is. The, like, the motivation for it. Yeah. I, I don't know, for some reason I just thought it would be, like, something, like, crazier. Did you? Yeah. I didn't. I kept thinking it would be something crazier. Uh, going into the movie, I did not think any of the family was going to have anything to do with it. No, I didn't either. Because they reveal, like, probably an hour into the movie, right before the last act, that one of the brothers and his girlfriend are in on it. Yeah. Uh, which is which is cool because I, I it didn't feel like cheap in the way like at the very end like they come out like I liked that like we as the audience knew before the character knew and then she, and then we get to see, like have that like tension whenever yeah. they're in the same room together and stuff like I thought it was really well done and then um, watching her listening in and finally finding out that they yeah. were involved I thought there was maybe gonna be some sort of weird cult thing about it maybe because of the masks because of the masks and like there is like a mythological and religious connotations to like certain animals and stuff like that yeah that's kind of what the sense I got and because they were so secluded 
I thought it would be like a weird cult thing because they never, other than the fact that it's like a terrifying thing to do, like why are they like writing your next all over the walls and shit? Why? I guess I guess maybe why is because they're trying to make it look like it was a cult thing. They're trying to make it look like it was like it was connected to the neighbor's murder, and yeah. then it, but it was also like a warning to the other people in the house because the way the neighbor sees it, and then he gets killed right after, and then. Yeah. Someone sees it in the house. and they, It's only done twice. Uh, yeah, twice. Is it? Yeah, on the patio door for the neighbor. Oh, yeah, and with the and mother. The on the mom's and wall. the mom's wall. Okay. Well, because, like, yeah, that's the only thing I had, but I th- think, like, well, what you said, I know that they're trying to connect those things to make it look like it was something that it wasn't. Like, I'm just kind of curious, like, if it was because of occult things. And, like, because, like, uh, Crispin's girlfriend, like, according to him, his plan, she was always supposed to survive because she was the witness, the, like, impartial witness. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know, like, maybe to, like, think that, like, oh, crazy fucking mass devil worshippers or whatever. That's, I sorry I thought the movie was gonna go. I didn't. But thankfully it didn't, though. I'm, I'm not, like, disappointed that it didn't. Yeah. Because that would have been pretty fucking rote, actually. It would be what you would expect. It was what I expected because I am very fam- familiar with these kind of movies. And that was my phone, also Archer. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what you're like led to expect from these like types of movies. Just because I am very familiar with them. Right. So it definitely worked on my uh, expectations very well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I was just... It was funny to me that I was finally excited for... A movie like this, because I usually don't get excited for some reason for like horror thriller movies. I haven't really until I started dating you, and then, but I got really excited for this one for some reason. I think just the trailer was really effective, yeah. and then the trailer was great. Yeah, and then I'm glad it was just ended up being a really good movie. Yeah, like I can't wait to watch it again. Yeah, me too. It's definitely a purchase. Definitely a purchase. I mean, because that's yeah, like you said, like you're kind of new to a lot of this stuff as far as like your exposure to them like you yeah. might have, even like some of the classics like most of the time I'll ask you if you've seen something but like yeah I saw it when I was like nine yeah like Silence of the Lambs like I we watched Silence of the Lambs a couple weeks ago um, yeah I was really young the first time I yeah because my family loved that movie yeah so it would be like on in the background sometimes yeah but I so I would see some of it but it didn't really sink in with me well, what is and then the last time I saw it after that was in a bar, so that doesn't count either. What What is your, like, what would you say is, like, the genre, like, I mean, I, I appreciate that now you're kind of giving horror movies a little bit more of a chance, which you kind of forced to sometimes. <laughs> but, like, what was the genre that kind of attracted to you just in general before, before like that? I liked suspense. You like suspense, like, mystery movies and yeah, stuff? Yeah, mystery movies, because one of my favorite movies is Usual, Usual suspects. suspects. Yeah. So, I liked movies like that, like Memento. Yeah. Like, I don't mind... And I also... I mean, I don't mind gore and, like, weird things like that. I liked Seven a lot. Yeah. But, like... I like things with a twist that make you think. Like, psychological thrillers, I guess. Yeah. That's more so what I used to watch. Or superhero movies. Or superhero movies. Um, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I mean, like, I... I'm just... I'm pretty, I have pretty eclectic taste in movies. Like, I kind of like everything as long as it's good. Yeah, I mean, I'll give. I would give anything a chance, but I just like growing up. I, I never really, or even as I got older, I just for some. I hate when things jump out at me. You don't like jump scares, yeah? I hate that. Afterwards, I think it's fun, but most I just hate good, anticipating that. Most good horror movies are not predicated on jump scares. No, I know, but I just I that was always my experience, you yeah. know. I and then I used to get really creeped out when I was growing up, so I just. Avoided just watching. Kind of stayed away from him. Yeah. Yeah. Avoided watching that because I'd get really creeped out and then creep myself out. Yeah. Which is, I guess, the part of their purpose. You know, like creep you out. Yeah. But, like, even when I was like in high school, I couldn't handle it. Sometimes I would just be like, uh, I'd be like a mess all night. <laughs> I know it's funny, but it's like it's I just couldn't do it. Like I just get creeped out being alone in the house, you know. So. Now I guess I'm kind of forced to watch them. That's fine. Let's just grab some blankets. I'm good. Yeah. I guess. I Although, like, I don't know. I do cut some horror movies a lot of slack. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's something that I like that you think is retarded? 
that you think is terrible. retarded? That, that, what, I if I, what if I ever, like, showed you? Because usually I will say, like, I'm just going to watch this by myself. Because, like, this is not... I haven't really seen anything. But, like, sometimes you talk about movies and I'm like, well, that doesn't sound too... <laughs> well, I mean, maybe I'm just doing a bad job pitching it to you. Maybe. That's possible. Sometimes I get my excitement... Gets the best of you. Gets the best of me when it comes to these things. It really does sometimes. Because it's... I really love movies. I love talking about movies. I love I love all that kind of stuff. So sometimes maybe I'm not very clear. So it's something to work on. I have to pitch watching movies to you more successfully. Wow, these are becoming self relevatory podcasts. Just learning about new things about myself every day, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Was that, was that Bane? No. That's not Bane. It sounded like Bane a little bit. Your Bane voice. <laughs> My Bane voice? Do it. No. Do you do the Bane voice? No. Don't do it. <clears throat> I am the League of Shadows, and I'm here to fulfill Razagul's destiny! Yes. <laughs> that used to freak you me out. You fight like I'm... <laughs> you fight like... Fuck! <laughs> you fight like a much younger man. <laughs> Leaving nothing back. Or holding nothing back. Die. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. That's enough. Sean used to do that in the dark. <laughs> I was used. To, I was really good at it when you first met me. Yeah. Because I when, like right before I met Sarah, like I worked at a place where I had a lot of like fucking mindless like work to do, and I would, and I just saw Dark Knight Rises, and I was <laughs> I would just do the Bane impression to myself all the time. I don't know why. I was just bored out of that's fucking like a fourteen hour shift, like putting boxes and trucks, like yeah. You gotta do what you gotta gotta do, you know. You make it through the night. It's an overnight thing. Ugh. That was a that was a rough, rough gig. But uh anyways. Your next is awesome. I agree. Uh I was I was really, really impressed. Not just impressed, it exceeded my expectations. You said right after we left the theater you'd see it again. <laughs> I would. I was. Because my sister, we tried to get my sister to go with us. Uh, she's also, if you want to see somebody that cuts horror movies some slack, talk to my sister Megan. My sister Megan watches just slasher flicks. Like, she loves that genre. I don't know if she would, like, consciously recognize it, but Megan watches, like, a lot of slasher movies. Um, and. I was, and she couldn't go because she had like other things to do. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know, if Megan wanted to go see that, I'd totally go see that again. I'd go see it again. I'd go see it again. It would um, be worth all eighty dollars. Oh my god, the prices on these popcorn and candies! Oh my Jesus! We spent forty dollars. But basically, it costs us forty bucks to go. Um, With popcorn. That's because we got we we're stupid and we got fucking shit at the movie theater. That's our fault. Our bad. I, their popcorn's so good though. I think popcorn. Yeah. The icy was fantastic. Try to find ways to smuggle coke in there or something. Not, co- not cocaine. Cocaine. Uh, Coca Cola. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than paying eight dollars for coke. Sixty four ounces, mind you, but. That lasted us not the whole movie. No, we never get the free refills. I'm like, why don't we fucking do that? Even if we don't get it during the movie. Like when we're leaving. Because both of us are not gonna fucking get up like in the middle of a movie. No. Most likely. I hate doing that. Unless one of us checks out, like, this is stupid. Maybe that'll happen. But generally, if I go to the theater, I'm not fucking leaving. Like, even to the point, like, I have to be ready to just, like, piss myself. Like, it has to be that bad where I'm in physical pain to get up to go to the bathroom during a movie. Like, at the theater. No, I'm the same way. But, uh... I remember there was, like, when I saw... It was one of the Lord of the Rings. I had to pee for so much of the movie. Yeah. But I didn't get up, and then I ran... As soon as the credits hit, I just ran past everyone. Because it was, like, packed theater. We went, like, you know, premiere night or whatever. Yeah. I just remember my mom was like, where are you going? And I was like, I had <laughs> It was, like, painful. Going back to the Shire. Yeah. <laughs> no. But, uh... Yeah, so I totally recommend that movie. There is one last thing, because I want to have this conversation with Sarah really bad. I, I want to have this conversation with you, like, super bad. Okay. Not like the movie Super Bad, but, oh. like, uh, super bad in that I've... I wanted you to see what would happen if you had rewatched these films. Sarah and I 
watch the f- original three X Men movies in reverse order. In reverse order, actually, because we were just gonna watch X Men: The Last Stand as like a a lark. Yeah. So we're like, oh, let's watch a bad movie. Because what do we watch? We watch Daredevil first. Watch Daredevil director's cut, okay? Which is still not very good. It's like a dead on arrival movie. Like it's just mediocre. Yeah, there's some pretty funny parts of that. There is. There's some mostly rid- bullseye. There's ridiculous shit in that movie that is just like does not do it any favors. But anyways, um, but then we're like, you know what? Let's watch X Men: Last Stand. Let's just watch a bunch of bad, like kind of stupid, cheesy movies that are like mediocre. So we watch X Men: Last Stand, and then watching X Men Two uh, after it, and then the next day I was like, why don't we just finish this thing and watch X Men One? Yeah. Because neither of us, I hadn't seen any of these in kind of a, long, a while. Yeah. And Sarah, some of them not since the theater. Yep. So. That's why the last podcast I was confusing all the different X-Men movies. <laughs> yeah. We have one more to watch, uh, X-Men First Class. And then, like, within the past, like, month, we would have watched every X-Men movie that's been made. Yep. And then we'll probably get a maybe a... Actually, I've kinda, it kind of makes me want to watch the cartoon show when I watch the <gasps> Brian Singer movies. Do you have the cartoon show? It is on Netflix. Yay! I donated my DVDs to a good cause, to a young young boy named uh, Troy Miller. Aww. Way before he could fucking really watch them, though. So now they just sit there, and I'm always like, so you guys start watching those X-Men movies yet? Or X-Men DVDs. I really hope he does. Because like, I, like, I was like, oh, man. And it's on Netflix now, though, and they have Netflix, so I'm like, fuck. Maybe I should get them back. No. I don't know. I don't know. Give it a Troy. That motherfucker is not going to watch them on DVD. His grubby little hands. Don't call him. I'm gonna that. beat you up someday, Troy. Don't call him that. <laughs> no, uh, no, but like, so I was like, I was really super stoked. Like, I, oh, cool, I can give like a kid like these things. They're awesome. Uh, and like that's they're very big. Like they've bought in things that he they they don't think he's ready for. Like they bought like Darkwing Duck and shit like that. And he hasn't really and they haven't watched any of it yet. So they're waiting a little until he gets a little bit older. He's probably at, almost almost old enough. Yeah. Where like he he could get into X Men or Batman or something like that. Um, but yeah, they're all on Netflix, so we'll definitely watch them. But we have we have to watch X Men First Class because we watched X Men Origins not that long ago. We yeah. watched the new the Wolverine, mm-hmm. and we watched all three of these. So considering that it's been a long time since you've seen any of them, mm-hmm. like how did you do, do you feel any differently about them like, uh. at all? Some of it I do, some of it I don't. I still get really annoyed by some of the character timeline stuff. Like Iceman. I still... I, I will always hold a grudge that they used Iceman instead of Gambit. But they had a good reason why. They had a good reason, but it's... He's a fan favorite, and it was kind of like they could have done some cool shit with him. And I just want to see a good Gambit. I mean, we've, we've had this discussion slash argument before. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, why can't you... Like, because I, I, that's one thing I... And I've said it before on this podcast. Like, I do not understand about you. How you cannot separate the two or just consider it, like, a different continuity, just like the comic books. We just catalog, cataloged our, our loose comic books. You have, like, three different continuities of X-Men. I know. None of them are alike. I mean, except for the fact that mostly the characters are kept the way you probably want them. Yeah. They are. Like, as far as relationships and stuff like that. Which, in a weird way, is just super redundant, and because they know not to fuck with their audience like that. They don't fuck with what people like. I don't know, I just always thought what what Gambit did for Rogue was a lot more impactful than Iceman and Rogue. I think that would have been a cool thing to have those movies evolve further, and maybe with the new one you'll get something that you want. Maybe. I don't know if Anna Paquin's in it. I don't know if the Rogue is in the new X-Men, the Days of Future Past. She wouldn't be. Uh, she wouldn't be in this continuity. But this it's a time travel story, so I don't know how that's going to affect things. How do you things. know it's a time travel story? Because I've read... I know. Or it's actually Dawn of Future Past is the the comic book one. Now the, the movie version is called Days of Future Past. Uh, actually, common misconception. It's actually called Dawn of Future Past. So take that, you fucking snobs. <laughs> um... Yeah, because of the way she ends up in X Men: Last Stand, she takes the cure. She's not even barely even in the movie, and I think that just because the actress, there were so many things happening when that movie was made, so much tumultuous shit behind the scenes. Yeah, 
that like that's why that's a big part of why that movie is weird. Yeah. Um, oh, excuse me. Okay, well, sorry, I cut you off. Like, so, but what did you feel like they were better than you remember them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I needed the refresher, but I don't know. I still think some of the casting could have been done better, too. But then again, that's also how I see the characters. I think Halle Berry is a terrible storm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I told you, uh, what's her name? The original, Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett was originally the one that they were going after to do Storm. And I think that would have been a much better I choice. still think Amon should be Storm. Oh, David Bowie's wife? Yeah. No. She's not an actress. Sorry. Neither she's is Rebecca a, Romaine. She's a fucking model. Neither is Rebecca, Rebecca Romaine had started her acting career. And she's not terrible in those movies. She's actually a pretty good mystique. Yeah, I'll give her that. Yeah, she's decent. She didn't and have I to kinda, talk much. I kind of think I'm also disappointed in those movies because I don't think they developed the villains well enough. Except for Magneto. Uh, I agree. Uh, because, like, he... I think there needs to be, if you want to deal with the, like, battle between Xavier and... Magneto. Magneto, you need the full, like, why these people are in on either cause. Or, like, why, what led them to... Because, like, it, with the one with Toad and Sabretooth, they're just kind of... Because they're henchmen. Yeah, they're henchmen, but, like, I would, I'd like to know more about them, too. I know that would take more time than maybe the movie wants to, and it is focusing on the X-Men, but there's, like, no really development to the villains. No, there isn't. There and isn't. it bothers me a lot. They all, basically, they just present it as, like, ideologically different points of view between Xavier and uh, Magneto. And you're right. right. Even in all the movies, because he basically, other than Mystique, he has, like, a different set of henchmen every movie. Yeah. Um, and that's interesting, and I guess the one they kind of did that with was Pyro. Pyro has a fall because he's also he plays he's like his main lieutenant I guess just because he was in X Men two, and he's fucking he's which I actually really like him in X Men two, like I like his arc, yeah. I like the his his personal dilemma in X Men three he's just like this fucking sh- douchebag douchebag like faux punk rock wannabe like <laughs> asshole, <laughs> and that has like no character and it's like really cheesy and bad. Um... Yeah, he's the only one that gets in Mystique, obviously. Uh, Mystique actually does have some development, and they develop in the even in like something like First Class, like they add a little bit more to her. I think First Class is good in that respect that it gives you a broader perspective on some of the villains and, and stuff. Yeah. Um, because they all started as one group and then split her off. And split off. Yeah. So I'll give the, I'll give that one that. Um, but what did you but what do you think of them? Like, I think they're all right. They're okay. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah. What'd you think about X Men Two? Because you said something I thought was pretty shocking. What? When right before we started watching X Men Two, you said oh, it X, was... you said it was the worst one. It was all right. You still think it's the worst one after watching? No, it's not the worst one, but it's not my favorite. What's your favorite one? I think now that I remember them all correctly, it would be First Class. That's your favorite one. Yeah. What's your second? Second? Probably be the first one. Really? Over yeah. the second one? Yeah, and then the second one. See, I, I, think the, I think the second one's a much better movie than the first one. And we watched the extended version of the first one, too, so there's like 20 minutes more. Maybe that was why? Yeah, there's a, little bit, there's a little bit more development, character development and stuff. There's more small moments. Because the original theatrical cut of X-Men is like 86 minutes long. No, Super I liked short. I liked the first one because of the story with Rogue and Wolverine because they're I really like that they developed their kind of partnership or at least his like paternal instinct to her like his protector. It softens him up. It softens him up because that's how it always kind of was with him and Rogue. Yeah, he's a he's a badass with a heart of gold, heart of adamantium. No, but like uh, yeah, like as a movie, like if you want them to get behind Wolverine. Like, you have to give him something to, like, show a nice side. And I think there's a nice, good follow-through with that, actually, that relationship in X-Men 2. Yeah. Um, because because of how, like, Rogue kind of lighting him up a little bit and maybe giving him a little bit hope for himself, uh, like, it also makes, in a way, like, gives makes him lighten up around the other kids and becomes kind of a protector of, like, the young X-Men. Yeah, understanding that... 
kind of like what Xavier says to him is like, you're not the only one. We're yeah. not the only ones. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. I think the first one's good. Um, in the, its straightforwardness, like I think it's really That's, good. Yeah, and it's actually like I, I was surprised how well they hold held held up for me. Yeah, I was even like not hating, not despising X Men Last Stand like I had in the past. It still wasn't that great. I think it's a bad sequel to X Men Two. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's totally bizarre. Like in terms of that, the continuity of that those the first two are very in, the first two are very in sync with each other. Obviously, yeah. same writers, same directors, yeah. same actors. X Men Three is the most comic book of them all. It's like more analogous to something like The Avengers. Yeah, it's like bright, colorful, goofy. Um, that movie is just like sequelitis shit, where they just stuff to the brim with subplots and like all sorts of stuff like that, and. Because originally the intent was to just do do the Dark Phoenix saga. Like, they were going to have the stuff with the Brotherhood. Yeah. And, um... And the X-Men. And, but there was a third group that was... The the, uh, the Dark Phoenix was, like, what's... Like, the Hell Group or something like that? The Fire Club? It's a thing, uh... The Fire... Hellfire Club. Hellfire Club, yeah. yeah. Uh, she was kind of, like, I think, like, a god to them or something like that. So they were going to have this like that this this try type of battle. Yeah. Um but the stuff with the cure got thrown in cuz at the time Joss Whedon had written I believe it was his first X-Men run, like run Ultimate X-Men. It's mm-hmm. called The Cure. Mm-hmm. And that's heavily what this draws from. Right. Um which I think was the biggest mistake this movie made. Like, as far as plot goes. But a lot of it also had to do with the fact that a lot of the actors didn't want to come back because Brian Singer dropped out. But he only dropped out because Fox didn't want to wait for him to finish Superman Returns. <laughs> That's why. Womp womp. Yeah, so they like basically was like, fuck you. You abandoned us. Actually, the director of X-Men First Class, Matthew Vaughn, yeah. was originally supposed to direct X-Men Last Stand. That might have been better. And the reason he dropped out was because he was like, I don't have enough time to make a good movie. <laughs> so good they, luck, brought, they brought on Brett Ratner because he had made Rush Hour and Rush Hour was super successful and thrown together in like a month before they started shooting yeah and they're like oh you could do that too with this obviously because you've done it before so it, no happy accidents Jackie, in the world Jackie Chan yeah <laughs> they should have cast Jackie Chan in all of the roles and Chris Tucker they should have just made this in a Rush Chris Hour Chris Tucker should have been Storm he should have been Storm ah be like he is <laughs> do you in, understand uh, the words coming out of my mouth he'd be like in um Chris Tucker of, of in like uh, the way he was in The Fifth Element. <laughs> um, yeah, so there was a lot of stuff working against that movie. So it's like, I'm surprised it's like as cohesive as it is. Yeah, because it's fine. It's kind of like if you separate it from the rest of everything, it's kind of fine. It was kind of okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So any any final thoughts on about the uh, X Men films? I should try to be more open-minded, I guess. I think you should. <laughs> I think next up on the docket... What? ...of things that make you watch again... What? Spider-Man. No! Yeah, we're gonna rewatch Spider-Man. No. We're gonna do I it. I hate those movies. Oh my god, Sarah, you're so wrong. And I, I'm just... I'm gonna just... I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm gonna prove how wrong you are to yourself. Cheers. Yeah. Please. Listen. Listen. We usually agree a lot on, like, movies for the most part. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. I think Spider-Man's awesome. I think if you give it a chance and separate your fucking, like, I oh, Ultimate Spider-Man, that's my Spider-Man, bullshit. I feel like Because, you, you know what? You got the Spider-Man of your era, and that movie sucked. Yeah, the Amazing dude. Spider-Man. I know. That is the Spider-Man of your comic book, like, knowledge era. I feel like I'm being lectured right now. You are being lectured, because nobody should hate Spider-Man, and not fucking, especially not Spider-Man 2. I can't wait to get Spider-Man 3 with you. Spider-Man 3 is not, not good. I don't, def- like, I don't think it's horrible, but I, that's another movie that was had weird studio interference where they, like, forced him to put Venom in there and stuff like that. Well, I'm singing. Yeah, there's no explanation. There's no good explanation for that. But if he hadn't had the stupid symbiote plotline bullshit, it wouldn't have been there. Maybe that was, like, him, his fuck you to, like, them. Maybe. It Maybe. might have been. 
Sam Raimi was super... He was so depressed about Spider-Man 3 that that's why he wanted to make Spider-Man 4 and 5. They were going to do 4 and 5. Yeah. That's what was in production. And then they rushed Amazing Spider-Man right after. And the reason he dropped out of Spider-Man 4 and 5 was because they were doing it to him again. They would not, like, leave him alone. They were imposing characters on him. He was like, I, listen, he's like, we've already been down this road. It didn't do good. He's like, I'm re- he's really sad that that's how he went out with Spider-Man 3. He's, like, bummed about it. Like, legitimately, like, Aww. I got fucked. I do like that Bruce Campbell's in Well, because it was going to be like, John Malkovich was cast as the Vulture. Yeah, that would have been great. Like, it had some serious legs. Like, very cool shit. And I was really looking forward to it. And then, <laughs> and I got Amazing Spider-Man. It was terrible. That movie is terrible. It's like not even defensively. Like I don't know. And like fucking fuck, fuck you, comic book fanboy, fucking idiots. Oh my god, because they will defend that movie to the teeth. It's terrible. That's not a good movie. No. Regardless of how you feel about that character, it's just a bad movie. It is. Anyways, okay, that's gonna do it for us. I'm Sean. And I'm Sarah. And you've been listening to my future has been fu- face fucked <laughs> podcast episode <laughs> ten. Get the name right. Mark it on your calendar, you fucking monkey. Donkey piece of shit. I love you. You're Tourette's.